If you're taking the CIE A-Level Maths 9709 Pure 3 exam in May June 2025, then this video is for you. I've analyzed 14 of the most recent papers to identify key trends and in this video we're going to break them down so you know exactly what to expect. And if you stick around until the end, I've got a special guest paper just for you. I'm Tokuzo Ganre, I graduated high school with straight A stars and for the past two years I've been helping students like you do the same. If you're feeling anxious, overwhelmed or unsure where to start, I've created a complete course that streamlines everything for you with step-by-step -step videos, interactive quizzes and an exclusive student community to keep you on track. So click the first link in the description to get access to the course right now. Otherwise, like the video, subscribe and let's dive right in. We're going to break this down topic by topic, identifying the key questions you should focus on for each topic. Then after that, I'll give you some general advice to help you do well in your exam. So let's start with the first topic, algebra. This is actually the highest scoring topic in all of PO3. This is because it consists of five subtopics in the modulus function, factor and remainder theorem, polynomial division, partial fractions, and binomial expansion. However, in all fairness, it's only about two of the five questions that get tested per paper. These are your partial fractions question, which has appeared in 11 of the last 14 papers, and your binomial expansion question, which has appeared in 10 of the last 14 papers. And you'll find that these two are usually combined into one single question, where part A is the partial fractions and then part B is the binomial expansion. So make sure you're comfortable with these two concepts. In the logs topic, we've seen a rise in popularity with the linear law question, which appeared in five of last year's seven papers. This is not the most difficult concept, but if you've never seen it before, it can look quite daunting. So make sure you're up to speed with this concept. The standard solve the equation of some logarithmic equation or exponential equation is the other question you'll find under this topic. And this actually shows up quite a bit. It's appeared in nine of the last 14 papers. I would strongly encourage that you master your logarithms because in as much as the topic itself might not carry a lot of marks, it serves as a foundation to some of the more complex topics. For example, you find that under integration, you tend to have to simplify your answers using manipulation of logarithms. And if you don't know how to do that, then those are marks you're losing out on. For trig, it's weird because there is no clear dominant question. There are three main types of questions. There's your standard proof the identity question. Then there's your harmonic identity. That's your R course R sign questions. And finally, there's a solve the trig equation question where you have to use your compound angle or double angle formulas. The frequencies of these three questions are all over the place. So my advice to you would be to make sure you master all of your trig identities and this includes your compound angle formulas as well as your double angle formulas and you should know when to use what identity. For example, for course there are three double angle formulas, at any given moment you should know which one will work best for you. And this is something that only comes with practice and solving a lot of trig questions. If I had to guess, I'd say we're getting a harmonic identity in June, but like I say, this topic is all over the place, so expect anything. Differentiation has three main types of questions. Your stationary point question, your implicit differentiation question, and your parametric differentiation question. The stationary point question is one of the more dominant questions in all of PO3. It has appeared in 11 of the last 14 papers, so there's a good chance that this shows up in the June series. And with this question, the difficulty is not so much in the concept itself, because I'm sure by the time you do P3, you know that if you want to find a stationary point, you're simply equating dy dx to zero. The difficulty comes in simplifying your dy dx because now we're dealing with very complex functions. So you find that when you differentiate your y, your function in y, what you get for dy dx is going to be some complex expression that you're going to have to equate to zero and then solve that. So that's where it becomes a bit tricky. Usually if you simplify your dy dx properly, you should find that there's something that you can factor out. And once you factor out whatever it is that you have to factor out, it becomes much simpler to solve your equation. On that note, whenever you think of dividing by a variable, please don't do it. Please just factor out the variable. Don't divide by it. You will lose a solution. Now onto the implicit and parametric differentiation. So these two questions are substitutes of each other. 
meaning that if the implicit differentiation question comes, you're not getting parametric differentiation. My guess is that in the June series, you're going to get an implicit differentiation question because looking at the previous questions that have come for differentiation in June, so 2022 June, 2023 June, 2024 June, they've all been implicit differentiation question. This is specifically for variant two. Integration as a concept is undoubtedly the most essential in pure three. Typically you get either an integration by parts question or an integration by substitution question. And in recent times, it looks like they've just about preferred the integration by substitution question. But depending on the variant you're going to write, you're either going to get a substitution question or a bypass question. So you need to be comfortable with both of them. Something worth noting is that last year in June, there was a trend of integration of trig functions questions. So make sure you know how to deal with those. Another integration question to look out for is the integration of a quotient where you first divide your polynomial then you integrate the result. It could be a surprise package in June, so go through it and make sure you understand how it works. Numerical solutions is probably the most predictable topic in pure three. You're going to get a three or four part question where part A is locating a root either by calculation or by sketching two graphs. Then part B is a very cleverly worded question where all they're asking you to do is to prove that the iterative formula is the same as the original equation. If you ever see a question that starts off by saying show that if a sequence of values converges and then they give you some iterative formula, then it converges to alpha. In this question, all they want you to do is to prove that the iterative formula can in fact be simplified to give us the equation in part A. Then the third question is typically carrying out your iterations to find your roots using the iterative formula. I don't expect you to be losing marks in this topic. The key here is to know how to sketch all the different types of graphs. I know it's a dangerous assumption, but I'm assuming that you know how to draw the graph of a straight line. You should know how to draw a quadratic. You should know how to draw a cubic function. You should know how to draw a rational function. You should know how to draw your exponentials and you should know how to draw your logarithms and quite popular, your trig functions. Nine out of 10 times you have to draw some graph of a trig function in this topic, especially your quad, cosec and sec. So go over these graphs. Apart from graph sketching, make sure you know how to use your iterative formula to find your root. Vectors is a tricky one to predict because it's very application based. You find that in almost every paper, you have some sort of scalar product application. And for many 2024 papers, the application was in finding the angle between two lines. The question appeared in six of the seven papers. And something very crucial to note, Cambridge can be very sneaky at times. They might not always ask for the angle itself, but they could say something like find the cosine of the angle, which just means find cos theta. So make sure to read the questions very carefully. I think I've probably been saying this for quite a while now, but we're long overdue a foot of the perpendicular question. We're probably going to see it back in play sometime this year, if not in June, then in November. So make sure you know what the foot of the perpendicular is and you know how to find the position vector of the foot of the perpendicular. Apart from your scalar product application, you tend to get a question related to parallel, intersect, or skew lines. In general, if two lines are parallel, then their direction vectors are scalar multiples of each other. To prove that two lines intersect, you need to solve the equations of the lines simultaneously. You end up with a set of three equations, and you have to prove that all of these equations are satisfied. To prove that lines are skewed, just prove that the lines are not parallel and they do not intersect. There's a good chance that one of parallel intersect or skew lines shows up in the June series, so prepare for that. And this implies that you should be comfortable with finding the vector equation of a straight line. Moving on to differential equations. So there are two types of differential equations. We have the standard solve the differential equation, which is the easy one. And then there's the rates of change DE which is the hard one. Here they give you rates of change information and using this information, you're supposed to create the differential equation. And then after you've created it, you have to solve that differential equation. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. The rates of change DE is hard. And unfortunately in 2024, this was a very popular question. It appeared in five of the seven papers and on average, it carried 10 marks. So it really is a big deal. So make sure to go over this question and I don't think Cambridge will stop bringing it anytime soon. 
finally, we have complex numbers. This is definitely the most diverse topic in all of Pure 3 maths. There's just so much that Cambridge can and has done with this topic. Last year, we witnessed some of the more unexplored topics being tested quite a bit. So that's your two square root questions and your polar and Euler form. I might be wrong, but I really don't think they'll continue to test the two square root question that much. Because once you understand the method behind it, it's very straightforward. And Cambridge doesn't like giving us straightforward things. Polar and Euler form, I think they'll continue to run with it. So there's a good chance that it shows up in June. You can be certain an Argon diagram question is coming. This has appeared in 13 of the last 14 papers, making it the most common question in all of Pure 3. And I also suspect that the complex polynomial equation question might also pop up in one of the papers. Okay, so that's all the topics. So let's round this up. Here's a list of all the priority questions for the 9709 CIE A-level maths Pure 3 May June 2025 exam. Partial fractions, binomial expansion, linear law, compound and double angles, implicit differentiation, stationary points, integration by substitution, integration by parts, numerical solutions, angle between two lines for vectors, parallel intersect and skew lines again for vectors, and then your rates of change differential equation, your organ diagrams, and your polar and Euler form. Now, as promised, if you've made it this far into the video, I have something very special for you. Using all the trends that we've analyzed and my own intuition and insights from Cambridge examiners, I've created a guest paper for Pure 3 for the May-June 2025 exam. It's designed to look and feel just like the actual exam so that you can get realistic practice. It includes a Cambridge-style marking scheme so you know exactly where you're gaining and losing marks. Think of it as the exam before the exam, a way to get an unfair advantage over your peers. So if you really want to get those top grades, don't miss out. Grab your copy right now. Click the link in the pinned comment down below. Now I've been going through some examiners reports to give you guys tips on what Cambridge examiners actually expect from you guys. So the first issue was to do with exact values. If a question requires you to give your answer in exact form, then use exact form. Don't give your answer as a decimal, you won't get the mark. If they don't specify that your answer should be exact, then you can give your answer correct to three significant figures. Angles in degrees should be given to one decimal place. In radians, they should be to three significant figures, unless they say otherwise. And as obvious as this sounds, make sure that you show all of your working. Yes, you can do your calculations on your calculator, but show what it is that you put into your calculator. They want to see the substitution of your values. The next thing is to do with the clarity of your work. If you make a mistake, don't write on top of that mistake. Cancel out neatly and then write the correct answer below. Remember your answer scripts are scanned before they are marked so if they can't see what you've written then they're just not going to give you the marks. And on that note also make sure you set out your work in a logical manner so that an examiner is able to follow your solution. If they can't see where you're coming from or where you're going then they have every right to mark you down so don't give them that chance. For your Pure 3 exam, you need to have a compass and a protractor. You need this for drawing your argon diagrams. They can bring an argon diagram in which you have to bisect a line, in which case you need a compass, or they could bring an argon diagram in which you need to draw an argument, in which case you need a protractor. So make sure you have a compass and a protractor. Now the next one has to do with when you're solving questions. Say for example you have y equals cos theta. Make sure that you stick to theta throughout the question. There's a tendency to change that theta to an x because you're generally just used to working with x. So make sure you don't make that mistake, otherwise you could lose marks for something that is very easily avoidable. Beforehand, make sure to check which formulas are provided in the MF19 so that you don't end up scrambling in the exam looking for the formula that they don't actually provide you with. There are a few key formulas that aren't provided, so make sure that you memorize those formulas. For questions that say show that the answer is equal to this, you need to show every single step you took to get to the answer. Because the answer has already been given, they're not interested in your final answer. They're interested in the steps that you're taking to get to that answer. So showing all your working in such a case is even more essential. And leading up to the exam, just make sure that you're well rested. Get some good sleep, drink water, stay hydrated, get some exercise, touch grass. That's all from me. 
I wish you guys the very best of luck in your Pure 3 exam and of course all the other exam. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you do not want to fail your A-levels and share this video with all your friends. Good luck. Thank you.